Let's edit a photo. Right behind gear recommendations, editing help is by far one of the most common questions that I get. And it's easy to see why, right? You can salvage an improper exposure, you can take a beautiful exposure and enhance it into a masterpiece. It's really where you can take the, the raw image, which is the canvas, so to speak, and paint your masterpiece onto it. I did an editing session a little while ago on this channel and I got really nice feedback from it, so I wanted to walk through a couple more. I have two of my favorite wildlife photos of all time, one that wasn't exposed properly so I can show how to salvage that a little bit, and then one that I think I got pretty right in camera, but it looks incorrect and there's some things I did on purpose while taking that photo that I want to talk through also. One's a cute little fox, the other one's a bear. Let's get into it. So diving right into it, you can see that I did miss the exposure on this fox a little bit. And part of that is because there were some variable lighting conditions. It was going from sunny to overcast and I just didn't adjust quick enough. I can admit I made a mistake. That's gonna happen to everybody. So it's important to know how to recover that when it happens. Thankfully, it is literally just as easy as raising the exposure. So we're gonna start with that. Uh, I'm not gonna go super conservative. I think I'm just gonna crank it up to somewhere between one and one and a half just to get it into a nice neutral place and then we're gonna push some other levels around and try to get it to where it looks like it was shot correctly in camera. Thankfully, the Sony a7R 3 and later camera bodies are what is called ISO invariant. And what this means is that you can shoot a photo underexposed at a lower ISO and raise it in post and actually recover that exposure with the same amount of noise as if you'd shot it at a higher ISO and properly exposed it in the first place. So I raised this up to, let's go one and a half here. And I am going to add a little contrast back. It does look a tad washed out and that's to be expected, I suppose. We'll go plus 30 on that. And then I'm going to bring the highlights down a pretty significant amount because I want the whites in that fur to remain detailed and textured. And then we'll bring the shadows back up as well, about the same amount, keep everything fairly level in this. So if you look at the histogram now, we're pretty close to the middle of that range, which is what you'd want for a properly exposed photo. I do want a little more depth to this, um, but you'll see if I bring the shadows back down, the whole photo gets darker in a way I don't necessarily love. And so I'm gonna just actually bring those, the blacks down to compensate for that. And it gives it just a little more punch. One of the other ways I like to bring just a touch of punch into a photo is with the dehaze slider. But I am gonna warn you, you have to be careful with this one. If you crank it too far, it's maybe one of the ugliest editing features you could possibly implement. But being careful and cautious with it, like plus 10, gives it a little depth and richness to this photo that I love. You guys already know about me, I love my colors. So let's get that vibrance up, bring the saturation up a tad too. All right, already looking better. I love to soft proof as I go to make sure I haven't cranked anything weird here. So check it out. Already, this is starting to look pretty good, right? This looks like maybe an in-camera JPEG. So you know that you've like made good editing progress, but it's not something you'd necessarily hang on your wall yet, but that's a good direction to be going in. I can tell that my white balance was good for this photo. It looks very neutral, but I was shooting this early in the morning and the point of golden hour is golden light. So I'm going to take my white balance and I'm gonna bring it up, not too much. Once again, going too heavy handed on this is a surefire way to get a weird looking photo, but just a little bit of boosting those warm tones. And then you see this fur on him. To me, it looks like it still has just a hint of a greenish hue. And so I'm gonna boost my tint up just a little bit here to neutralize all of that. This is starting to look pretty good, all right. Now, wildlife photos have a very important goal and more than almost any other subset of photography, except for maybe uh, portraiture, it's subject isolation. And that's part of the reason that we shoot wildlife photos with like a 400 millimeter f2.8, which is what I used for this photo, or you know, a 600 f4, that drop off from the subject into the bokeh background is extremely important. So I'm gonna do a couple small things to boost that right off the bat. First things first, we're gonna give this just a dollop of vignette, nothing extreme, maybe like negative nine or 10, just enough to, to give it a little boost. 
And then I'm going to do a little bit of selective sharpening. To show what I mean by selective sharpening, we're gonna go all the way down here. I'm gonna crank the sharpening up and you'll notice the bokeh behind him gets sharpened as well because this is a global slider. And it ends up putting basically fake edge pixels into a spot where there aren't any edge pixels. And you get this really weird kind of a fake grain. It looks like you printed it on a textured paper. Not desirable. So what I'm actually gonna do is a localized brush. So I'm going to open up my brush here in Lightroom and I'm going to add a little bit of sharpness to it and a little bit of texture. They're fairly similar looks, but in conjunction, I think they look really, really nice. And then make sure that auto mask is off because I want this entire face to be sharpened equally. And then I'm going to just brush the in focus parts of this fox's face. And it's pretty important here, once again, we're trying to avoid those weird sharp artifacts in the bokeh areas. So I'm being fairly delicate with this. To further enhance this drop off, I'm gonna do the exact same thing, but actually the opposite to the background. So I'm gonna take the sharpness off and actually push the texture negative fairly far. And I'm gonna push the clarity equally far. And we're going to do the same thing, but we're gonna brush in the background. And you can see pretty big brush, heavy feathering, really, really soft. And you notice that it's just softening up the bokeh behind this baby fox. Look how cute he is, look at his little face, I love him. Do the same thing here in the foreground. Oh yeah, oh he's popping now. Look at him go. So already this is looking way better, right? But there's one last detail. When we boosted that color temperature to the warmer side of things, the grass went from this rich, vibrant springtime grass to kind of a weird muddy yellow color. And so I'm gonna go back into this HSL color panel. This is something I talked about in my previous editing video, which I'll link down below in case you missed it. But this is a fun way to kind of push just a single color channel. So I wanna retain those greens without affecting the color of the fox or the out of focus pink flowers in the foreground and the background. So I take this green color channel here and I adjust the hue, just plus 14. Now pay close attention to the grass behind him. It changes from that kind of soft yellow into a vibrant green that's really nice looking, right? So let's go back up to about plus 15 here. And then I think one last thing that'll help him pop is by lowering the luminance just a touch. Uh, that just kind of darkens those greens up so that the fox looks a little bit more illuminated than the background. I think this looks pretty good. You could export this and call it good, and I don't think anyone would really complain, but there's one final little detail I'd love to touch on, and that is the eyes, the windows to the little fox soul, right? Okay, so the eyes. This is something you have to be careful with. Everyone's seen a photo where the eyes are over-edited and look ridiculous. We're not looking to do that, but we are looking to give them a little bit of a pop, and there's a very easy trick to that. So first off is just a tiny bit of added exposure, and I'm talking subtle, raise the shadows a little bit, and then we do want auto masking on, because we don't want to give them weird raccoon halos, right? We only want the eyeballs themselves to get changed. And then since his eyes are yellow, I'm gonna boost that just a touch as well. Make my brush nice and small here, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paint it around. And you notice I'm not even doing the pupil in the middle, I'm being very careful to only trace the iris of his eyes, the, the colored part that's getting hit by the sun. And if you do this right, it should be pretty subtle in a way that just looks nice, but it doesn't look, I mean, look at this, we'll crank it up. Suddenly he looks like a radioactive fox, right? He looks like a superhero in a Marvel comic. You don't want this. I mean, maybe you want it, it's kind of cool. It's not necessarily something you're gonna hang in an art gallery, right? But by keeping this exposure adjustment pretty subtle, like less than half a stop, you end up with uh, more personality coming out of this animal, a little bit more drama to it without actually creating an artificial looking image. And there you have it. Let's soft proof it really quick. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. I love it. Consider it good.
So moving on to the other photo, this was taken in Lake Clark National Park in Alaska, and this is by far one of the most popular photos I've ever shared. Every time I share it, it tends to go viral. It's been on magazine covers. I'm very lucky. Honestly, it was more luck than skill. You can't ask a bear to pose for you. I was in the right place at the right time, but by far one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. When you first look at it, it looks as though I underexposed it and might've made a mistake, but this one was actually intentional. I loved these stormy clouds in the top here. They have some nice textures, but you'll notice that if I had shot this exposed properly for the bear, that's just white and it's very difficult to recover highlight details. However, recovering shadow details is a lot easier. So I underexposed it in order to retain these highlights and give some drama to these clouds, but raising the shadows in post is, is very easy. And I should mention, I think this was shot on a Sony a7 II. So it's an actual older camera body and it still has a fantastic dynamic range. So don't feel like you might be missing out on, you know, a professional level camera not able to get these results. This was with an a7 II and a simple 24 to 70 lens. It's pretty straightforward. So I am gonna recover this exposure a little bit. It was underexposed, but this one was intentional rather than a, a full on error. Bringing that back up, but then we're gonna bring the highlights down to keep those storm cloud textures in there. That's looking good, that's looking good. Shadows up a little bit to keep the bear and the mountain and everything looking good as well. I'm not gonna go super far though, because I like the drama on this one. This is supposed to have some of that Alaskan grit, you know? Colors. Y'all know I like colors. This isn't new, this isn't breaking news. Don't need to call Anderson Cooper for this. Oh, Nate likes colors. This is already pretty good, but now we're gonna get into some localized trickery, so to speak. We're going back into our brushes here, and there is a couple things that I want to adjust. First and foremost, I am going to brighten up this bear just a tad. She's beautiful, but she needs to be a little more punchy to me, and so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna raise my exposure on her a tiny bit. Shadows up about maybe 30 again. Let's keep auto masking on. We're gonna just be pretty careful to follow through on her. Okay. Now auto masking's pretty smart, but don't, you know, don't go haywire here. You still have to like try to color in the lines. So, okay. Here we go. And then I'm gonna turn auto masking off because it's interpreting this back leg as not actually being part of her. So I'm gonna fill that in, get that paw looking good. Okay. I'm gonna give her a tad more detail with just a little bit of a clarity boost. And now we're talking. Okay, she kind of pops against that background. That's looking good, it's looking good. Okay, so the most important thing to me is this is fall foliage, right? I was there a little bit early. It's kind of tough to tell sometimes. Uh, Alaska gets about a week of fall colors. So if you don't time it perfectly, you're sort of out of luck. I was like three days early here. So we're gonna make do with what we got. Let's make a little brush here. I am going to, let's reset everything. I'm gonna boost this color, uh, boost the temperature up about plus I don't know, 25 or so. The exposure is gonna go up just a dollop as well to give these these uh, leaves a little bit of a, a glow. Let's give it a touch of clarity. Uh, that just kind of gives some textures to these so they have a little crispiness to it. And I'm gonna boost the saturation because this is all about bringing out those colors, right? So, brushing it in, oh. Oh yeah, that's good. And so you can be a little bit selective with stuff like this, right? You don't have to brush everything equally. I don't want these uh, pine trees in the back to turn yellow. I want the contrast from these yellow uh, aspens and poplars that are changing. I don't want the green trees to have this. So actually, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna turn on my auto masking here. Let's, uh, let's speed through this. You don't need me narrating every single part, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's looking good. Now those those leaves in the foreground are looking great, but I do see some stuff on the mountain that I think would look really cool. So I'm gonna do actually a similar thing up there. And I know this might feel like cheating, but bear with me because once again, we're kind of creating art here, right? This isn't necessarily just boosting what exists. I have a specific vision in mind and I wanna show you how I got there. 
So for the mountains in the back, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna boost the temperature a little bit, boost the exposure a tiny bit. Uh, I don't know if the saturation necessarily needs it, but I'm just gonna take these, these bushes on the hillside that are changing. It's up close to timberline, right? So they're probably not trees up there. And I'm just gonna be very selective brushing those in. Cool. So these yellows still don't have quite the pop I want. So we're gonna slide back down into this HSL color panel that I keep blabbering on about in every single photo that I make. And we're gonna go to the yellows. We're gonna push the hue actually down a little bit because I like these yellows richer. They're still a tad green. And so pushing it down takes them more towards that golden sort of an orange thing, right? So I don't know, let's say negative 25-ish, uh, 24 is good enough. And then now they look a little bit dark, so I'm gonna raise that luminance a tad. Oh yeah, now they got a little glow to them. Now they're starting to look real. Okay, this is good. This is real good. One final brush adjustment. I want that water in the front. It's a beautiful glacial turquoise, right? Same thing, we're gonna go just soft with it. Don't go overboard, glowing water looks weird as well, but um, a little bit of punch to that is just what the doctor ordered. Now we're talking. Slam on a little bit of a vignette and I think we can pretty much call it done. Just a tad, don't go overboard here. What the vignette does is it just kind of helps with the subject isolation. Unlike that last photo, where I was able to get some bokeh drop off. On this, the entire frame is in focus. And so subject isolation, of course the bear stands out because she's you know, floating on that foreground there, but you want to focus the eye towards the center. And having a centered subject like this is a good way to do it, but a vignette helps force the eyes to the middle. And additionally, it darkens the corners up in the top where those clouds are and brings back a little bit of that punch. Alternatively, if you really want to boost it, you can brush the clouds a little bit. You can add a little bit of a dehaze to it and a little bit of clarity. Once again, don't go too hard on this. If you're feeling aggressive, you can do that. Bring those clouds back just a tad. I think that's a little much over here. I'm gonna take some of that off. And I think I'm actually gonna adjust my crop a little bit because I want her more centered fine-tuned this exposure brush on the bear. I think I went a little bit hard on that. I want her to blend a tad more. And boom. There you have it. I think we're done. Thanks for watching again, everybody. I'm Nate in the Wild. It's been a pleasure having you here. Hopefully you all learned something. Drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Anything else you'd like to see me edit, if you'd like to see me do just some pure landscape stuff. Thanks for joining me. It's been great having you here. I'm Nate in the Wild. I'll see you next time.